Okay, before we go into the next step where we begin putting screws into the extrusions on the ends, I want to talk about something that I use that I think is helpful for this build. This is a blue, what's called a blue Permatex. And you got to be careful with this stuff because it can hurt your 3D printed parts. On this build, I'm going to mainly be using it on where it's metal to metal. So you're safe as long as you do that. Um, there is Vibratite and some other uh, thread lockers that are probably more suited for this, but this is what I got and I think it's fine to use. And you can find the link to this in my description. And the whole point of thread locker and the reason why you might want to use something like this is anytime you get a vibration in your um, frame or resonance, it can loosen up the screws a little bit here and there. So eventually uh, you may have loose screws and that may cause bad print quality. This stuff I'm gonna use pretty much across most of the frame. And of course another critical area where you wanna use this with the interface to the motor pulleys and the motors. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab some B extrusion. And this is where we're going to begin using the Loctite or the Blue Permatex. And I do like this gel, Blue Permatex, because it's a gel and you don't have to worry about getting it everywhere. You only need a little bit. So all you're gonna do here is insert these into the end of your hole on your extrusions. And then I'd say just go in about maybe three quarters of the way in. And then we're just gonna repeat that for all four ends. The manual calls out preloading nuts. This is very important because if you forget to do this, um, there's a really good chance that you're going to have to undo work. Go ahead and preload two into, into both this piece and this piece in these slots. Okay, so I've got that inserted. I'm going to go ahead and squeeze it in there a little bit. The nice thing about these are they really don't move easily. You don't want them to because you want those to stay in position. It makes it a lot easier to put, put things together when they're not moving around on you. Once again, mine are a little bit on the tighter side because this is powder coated extrusion. Yours may not be quite as tight as this, but I, I actually like this, like them about that way. Okay, so we're just gonna kind of put them in there. It doesn't really matter on the spacing right now. We're gonna repeat that for the other piece. Okay, so before we go to the next step, we're going to actually insert two additional um, preloaded nuts in here. So this is one of those areas where it could be a gotcha if you're not really paying attention or I guess know what, kind of know what to expect. So this is going to be used, let me show you this. So in the manual it says, insert two additional M3 nuts. You can see we're gonna go right in between these two. So where these screws are, there should be preloaded nuts in the extrusions. So that means we're gonna have a total of four. So we'll have one, two for each screw here and then two additional. This top one, you don't need the two additional, only the bottom one. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and insert the two that are going to be used to attach the Z extrusion. And just imagine doing this with nuts flying everywhere, because that's, uh, that's what you would have if you weren't using these. They do take a little more time to insert, but that gives us a good spot to go ahead and attach the M3 by six button head screws. I'm gonna go ahead and put these in to the two outside preloaded nuts. Just go ahead and do a few turns on those. They don't need to be super tight because we're gonna be fitting our extrusion over them. Now you're just gonna go ahead and take this, slide it over. I've kind of got it sitting on this top extrusion. And then you should be able to access the screw underneath. It may take a minute or two to find it. And it should line up perfectly to the bottom where the bottom's flush. And this is gonna move around. We're not even really getting them into position yet. So I'm, that one's in there. You can see it's, it's flush. We're gonna square it up here in a little bit. But for now, we just need to get them in. And now's a good time to double check that you have these two preloaded uh, nuts here. If you don't, you're gonna have to undo this and slide them in. Now we're gonna go ahead and flip it over. This is where we're going to preload at least three, nut, three uh, nuts on the back here. 
If you're going to run Bowden, you can add an additional two to this side. I would recommend, even if you're not sure or if, you know, you may want to one day. So I'd go ahead and do five in this one and three here. That's what I'm going to do. Set them up like this. Get it started on the top. And then just uh, slide it down. So I've got three. I've got four. I've just got a few more. So I, I need five in this side and three here. Okay, now you can see I've got all the nuts preloaded. Got five here and three here. So this is the top, this is the bottom. Once again, three on the right side of the back, five on the left side of the back. Now I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to go ahead and just like I did the bottom, I'm going to now do the top. That's the same process. I'm going to be putting a screw in here in three by six and then just tightening it up as a blind joint. I'll go ahead and show that now. Here's my M3x6 screw. Since it's metal on metal, I'm going to use some Permatex. Get that prepped. Same thing here. And now we're going to go ahead and set these on top. This is probably a good point to do a rough um, alignment, just so you don't, these things aren't too crooked. Okay, those are both in there. Now I should be able to access the screw. Get it nice and tight, or tight enough. All right, that's pretty good. So at this point, you should have something that looks like that. Okay, now the point of this next step, um, which is on page 32 of the manual I'm looking at, we're going to take some H extrusions and we're going to then basically get ready to square this up. So this is where we're going to have to do a little bit of adjustment. So I'm going to go ahead and loosen these, the ones that I just did in the previous step, just loosen them up a tad. And you're probably going to need to do this for all four screws. And we're basically going to slide these in with the goal of getting everything squared on the corners. So it should go something like that. And we're just gonna do it one side at a time. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this back up a little bit so it's not walking around too much. Okay, I've, I've repositioned things just a little bit so it'll be easier to get these in. But once you've got these H extrusions here, you're going to want to go ahead and access, get the get your wrench in here, your driver like I've got, and then just kind of put it into place. Just about there. So right now it looks a little ugly. Make sure these are loose so they can adjust a little bit as you square things up on the corners. I'm going to slide this in. Rotate it around so it's easier to for me to screw into. All right, I've got that all tightened down now, and it's nice and flat. There's no bounce. I've got what's called a machinist square right here, and I'm just making sure that this is a nice 90 degree angle on the outside. Um, these you can get these for maybe five six dollars on Amazon. Um, I'll put a link in the description, but these are great uh, I've used these on just about all my builds. Okay. Now. I'm just gonna double check that everything's nice and square on this side That looks pretty good There shouldn't be any gaps yeah, That looks good Okay now Okay, now that we've got all that done, our goal would be to set the distance for these Z extrusions. So right now they're not quite where they need to be. I'm gonna go ahead and orient this. This is the bottom. You know, it's 
the bottom because of uh, this is open and also because you've got your two preloaded things at the bottom here. These need to be 58 millimeters from the edge of the extrusion. So right now they're at about, yeah, they're way off. So they're like 40, less than 40. So I'm gonna have to push both of these in quite a bit. There, I'm guessing there might be a jig for this somewhere, but as long as you've got a good ruler like this, uh, I've used this for a lot of builds. There are some nicer ones, but I can read this because the letters are nice and white. Okay, so to do the adjustment, I'm gonna go ahead and loosen these up. And then I'm going to just kind of gently move them over. And depending on how tight, like I noticed this preload, preloaded nut doesn't wanna move real well. So I'm gonna just take the rail off for a minute and get it to where I think it roughly needs to be. So again, 58 from the outside edge to the inside edge. So I gotta go a little bit more. Getting real close though. All right, so I've gone ahead and made sure this one is exactly 58 millimeters from the edge. And I've, I'm going ahead and tighten it down. I'm gonna double check. Cause these things can slip around a little bit. Yeah, in fact it, yeah, no, it's right on. So now I'm going to do the same thing with the top. A lot of times it's easier just to flip. So right now that's 62. I think I'm happy with that. And now I'm just going to repeat on this side. Okay, I went ahead and adjusted both of these. And now I think they're, they're exactly 58, top and bottom. And the most important thing that you want here is parallel. You want these two to be parallel. So there will be opportunity to adjust this even after you are installing the rail, the, the uh, bed onto the rails and you should have a nice smooth movement. And we're going to put on some end stops for the rails. Before we do that, just make sure these bottom ones are nice and tight because you're not going to have access to them.